Welcome back, Rock Raiders. I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and we once again return to Planet U for some more high adventure deep underground. It's now 2024, 25 years since the release of Rock Raiders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're getting pretty old. But don't think that you Power Miners fans are off the hook either. It's been 15 years since the limiest spiritual successor hit store shelves. I guess we're getting old together. Today we're going to be taking a look at some brand new Rock Raiders news, and I'm as surprised as you are to be saying this. Back in 2020, some hard drives that belonged to the British video game developer Data Design Interactive were recovered and archived. DDI certainly would go on to gain some matter of infamy within gaming circles in the late 2000s, but back in 1999 they made a game called LEGO Rock Raiders. If you've watched the other Rock Raiders videos on this channel, then you may already be aware that DDI did far more than simply create the tie-in game for this LEGO toy. They actually played a significant part in developing the overall look and feel of the Rock Raiders theme, creating mainstay elements like the character of Chief, or even the LMS Explorer itself. Why is this relevant to today's video? Well, the process of restoring these drives has been an ongoing one, and repairing corrupted data has been one of the primary goals. To that end, something rather significant was recently dug up. Our first look at a pitch for a Rock Raiders motion simulator theme park ride. Take a look at this. How cool is that? Riding a hover scout through the caves of Planet U at Legoland would have been so much fun. It's a shame that it never came to be. Of particular note is how this footage seems to sync up with a mysterious audio file from the same drives. Even though this video footage is only a few short seconds long, there seems to have been at one time a full length clip, roughly three minutes long. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to one day recover that as well. The other substantial discovery here is that we're now finally able to get a better look at this repair mech that never saw integration in the games or release at retail. Previously, we only knew of two sources for it, one a render, and the other a photo of a physical model. The builds between them differ slightly, but the one scene rendered is the one we see again here. Let's see if we can piece it together from the few angles we have. One quick note here, these brick with bar pieces used in the hands really should be black, not dark grey. 
I had originally gone with dark gray when I first built the repair mech because a rendering error on the original source material prevented these parts from appearing properly. The photograph here indicated dark gray as a possibility, so I went with that and thought nothing of it. However, in the new motion simulator footage, we can clearly see this element is intended to be black. Just keep in mind that some of my photos in this video may be incorrect as a result. Overall, I'm a pretty big fan of this model. It's just big enough to be satisfying to construct, but still small enough to be practical in-universe. Being able to see what was going on with its back was the final key in allowing us to be more confident in our recreation here. It gets a recommendation from me, that's for sure. In other Rock Raiders news, it seems like we're getting an important piece in Dark Turquoise this year. The classic 3x1 slope brick was used all over the place in Rock Raiders prototypes, but never made it to proper production, until now. 31211 Macaw Parrots is bringing us a pair of lovely birds, and within them, a pair of lovely slope bricks. Hopefully they'll start to appear in other sets as well, so we can slowly start to augment our Rock Raider collections. Being a modern fan of Rock Raiders sometimes involves the roller coaster of hope and disappointment that accompanies checking every new set release for certain elements debuting in Dark Turquoise. I outlined some of the most sought after ones in my Street Racer video from way back when, and luckily this one ticks one of the boxes. Now I can go back to waiting for this piece so I can complete my Tunnel Scout. <laughs> Any day now. Somewhat related to Rock Raiders news, recently a fan showed me a rather intriguing piece of marketing material that I'd never seen before. Thomas Peter acquired this one over in Europe, and it seems to depict a number of Rock Raiders sets and alternate builds together. The backside, however, is where things really get interesting. Character stats. Curiously, the five stat blocks for each character have been given a ranking out of 12 possible stars. Juniper and I have worked on recreating them somewhat here in case anyone wants to download them for themselves. It's up to the individual to decide how impactful these stats really are to the characters, but nonetheless, they're certainly cool. However, they sure are familiar. I can't take credit for this at all, but late into production on this video, Juniper noticed a surprising correlation between these stat blocks and the stats laid out by DDI all the way back in April 1998. With the sole exception of each character's 9 point stat being bumped up to 12, every other attribute matches exactly. But how can this be? Surely the graphic designers for this marketing sign didn't go back to this specific DDI document for these stats. The correlation between these two implies the existence of some sort of series bible that has yet to be discovered. It's plausible that these stats were carried over within it and finally saw implementation in an unexpected way much later. The relationship between these two pieces of media allows us to also recreate what a stat card for Alex McLeod would look like. Wait, that's what they were going to call him? <laughs> uh, Chief. Let's go with Chief. Since we're on the topic of obscure marketing media, Pondering Lego acquired and scanned this Rock Raider sign from a store in Japan. I included it briefly in my last video, but I'll pop the full proper scans in the description below. Besides being a cool piece of art, notably this is the only instance of the Just Imagine slogan being paired with Rock Raiders that I know of. I'm curious to know more about this short-lived yet fondly remembered company slogan if anyone can offer me more information. To my knowledge, it was adopted at the start of the new millennium and dropped shortly after the switch to blue boxes in 2003. I don't know of any boxes from the late 90s with it, so that basically leaves us with a range of 2000 to 2002. Short-lived indeed. In keeping with the esoteric assortment of Rock Raiders items being discussed, now's perhaps a great time to bring up this fairly rare Chief Keychain. Not to be confused with the much more common Jet Keychain, this one was likely only available at Legoland locations or given out as a contest prize. There exists a Rocket Racer version as well from the Lego Racers game, and maybe others too. I can't remember where I got mine, probably eBay, but I actually recently traded it to Brian's Bricks for a boxed copy of the Ice Ramp Racers. Now, you might scoff at my willingness to trade such a rare piece of Rock Raiders memorabilia, but 
Brian is a huge fan of the theme too, and has made a lot of videos covering it. He's die-hard enough to have spent a good amount of time and money hunting down this Rock Raiders mug after all. I think we both walked away happy from this exchange. Now, one of these days I'll have to get around to building the set. The innumerable number of items the LEGO Group branded with the Rock Raiders name can be difficult to keep track of, but Merely has been working on developing a website to do exactly that. I'll link it in the description as well. Some of these items are truly awesome. And that just leaves us with new Rock Raiders merch. Yeah, you heard that right! If you're looking for t-shirts or other wall decos, you might want to check out Brick Monarch's shop. I only recently ordered from them, so I can't speak to the quality yet, but I'll pin a comment with my impressions of their stuff once it arrives. Additionally, Retrofit Card Shop recently released a few items that really caught my eye. This deck of playing cards features original artwork on nearly every available surface. It's such a high effort creation, I just had to pick up a set. They also sold me this awesome Rock Raiders Blueprint poster, which I've now hung as a constant reminder to get back to my How to Build Rock Raiders series. <laughs> Lastly, reflective Briconium stickers, just a great assortment of items. Anyways, that's what I've got for you this week. Lots of Rock Raiders related things all packaged into one video. One thing's for certain, this isn't going to be the last time we talk about this theme in 2024. I've been your host, R.R. Slugger, and I'll see you next time for some more high adventure deep underground.